I know that this is not who we are as a team. It's an overreaction Monday, but we're not going to overreact here. We're going to try and sift through a lot of the uh, bad stuff from what happened out on the field yesterday. Welcome into Teal the Show. I'm Jamal St. Cyr alongside Frank Frangie. Frank, uh, that was not what I think any of us expected to see on the field. No, they played miserably. And, and by their own admission, they didn't play very well. They played bad, badly in all areas. And when you play badly in all areas, the other team gained some confidence. And that's what wound up happening. And, and the Houston Texans gained confidence. Look, we can break this thing down. 10 different ways uh, who played badly nobody played well in that game too many unforced errors in that game which were the key to the game but in my mind the biggest problem with this team Jamal is they've got to get better at the line of scrimmage they're getting beat in the trenches almost every game on both sides of the ball I thought against Indianapolis the Jaguar defensive line won that battle and they won the game I thought against Kansas City and Houston, they lost the trenches on both sides, and that's the key. There's no margin of error where that happens, and that's what they better find a way to get corrected. All right, you brought us to the trenches, so let's start there. The Jaguars' pass rush did not get home on Sunday. They were going against a Texans team that was out four starters. Right. They didn't have four starters on their offensive line, and the Jaguars came up with <clears throat> zero sacks. Doug Peterson said that it just comes down to players going out there and making plays. I just think it comes down to each man. Just it's a want to, a will to, you know. Um, you know, obviously we can. It's a staff. You can create it with with games and and different things. You know, stunts and stuff. But I'll say it's hard when the ball's out of the quarterback's hand. You know, fast. So you're on your second step or maybe your third step making a move and the ball's gone. Uh, it does affect that a little bit. But but we can be better. Um, just understanding the. Uh, uh, the pass rush, the game plan, you know, that week and, and, and really um, use that to our advantage, um, you know, when you can. At some point, the guys have to just go and start finding a way to get sacks. Now, the good news is the next team that they're going to play in London, the Falcons gave up seven sacks on Sunday, so maybe that helps. But you were going against a Texans team with an offensive line that was full of backups. I am very concerned that the Jags don't have enough good pass rushers. That's just a reality. I think they're a well-coached team. I think they play hard. I think this is a good group of guys, and the culture and the effort is all there. I like this team, but I don't think they've got a lot of good pass rushers. Josh Allen's the best one. He was playing with the shoulder. He certainly is the best one. Trayvon Walker has not developed into a pass rusher yet. Uh, Caleb on has not not affected the passer in his years in the league. Yadshir Abdullah is a is a rookie. Uh, the internal guy, they really miss Devon Hamilton because he can collapse that pocket as the pass rusher, not just a run stuffer. But they've got to find, they've got to change something because they're really not getting to the passer, whether that's blitz packaging, whether that's coverages. Uh, that is a major, and we knew before the season, Jamal, it was going to be a concern, and it has played out that way. It really has. All right, let's go to the offense, Frank. Uh, the expectations yeah. were through the roof for what this offense could do and what it was going to be and how many points they were going to score. People were saying they could be the highest scoring offense in the NFL. We've talked about it here. And so far, uh, it, they've left a little bit to be desired. Well, here's what's happened, too. When you're not the most physical team, you have very little margin of error. Uh, Trevor cannot miss that throw to Zay Jones he missed against Kansas City when he air melted out of the back of the end zone. Calvin Ridley can't drop the ball on the first drive of the game when it's an easy touchdown. You, there's no room for error. You can't fumble after a slant, which they've done a few times. You can't have a hands to the face when you convert a fourth and one. When you're not the more physical team, it comes down to a handful of plays and there's no margin of error. I think the offense will get it figured out. Cam Robinson's got to come back and be the left tackle. Walker Little, in my mind, has got to move down to left guard. Anton Harrison will continue to play better. He'll be a way better player as the year goes on. I'm not worried about the offense finding it. But right now they have to find it. And again, in my opinion, they're not playing very well up front. And that means the margin of error... Uh, dropping passes, missing throws is very, very small. Right. That small margin of error makes it hard for them to operate. The problem hasn't been play calling, but a lot of people have been pointing the finger there. Press Taylor calling plays for full games this time for the first time this year. The Jaguars kind of had a little bit of an offensive spark in the second half that led to some people questioning if Doug Peterson had taken over play calling. Doug Peterson said that is not the case and that the offense just started getting the ball to their playmakers. Actually, the plan quite honestly, was to try to get them started early, you know, get, get Evan and Christian going and really get our run game established, as you saw, you know, early in the football game. Yeah, the one guy that really was playing like he was trying to win the game was Travis Etienne. He had a phenomenal game, 135 yards from scrimmage, I believe, and he looked like the guy who was trying to give them that offensive spark, and it just wasn't quite lighting. Yeah, the play calling, we've talked so much about that, and it's gotten kind of silly. 
Whoever's calling the plays called that pass to Ridley, but he didn't catch it. Called that pass last week to Zay Jones at the back of the end zone, but Trevor overthrew it. Calls all those plays to Trevor, uh, to Travis Etienne. The slant that Jamal Agnew caught and converted the first down before he fumbled, somebody called that play. The other slant to Rid Ridley that he dropped the ball, someone called that play. They're calling enough good plays. That's not the problem. The problem is they have to execute. They have to quit making mistakes like the hands to the face on Brandon Sheriff. They've got to quit making mistakes. Again, the better thing is if you can take over the game physically, I just don't think they're going to be able to do that. The play calling's fine, and I think, Doug, uh, like Doug said, Press Taylor's calling the plays, but they're all involved in it, Jamal. Everybody's involved. Doug told me last year Jim Bob was involved in it. Mike McCoy was involved in it. Press, they were all involved last year, and the ones that are here are all involved this year. It's an offensive brain trust. That's right. All right, one guy that a lot of people have been excited to see but has struggled the past couple of weeks, Frank, Calvin Ridley had a few key drops. You had talked about one just now. Uh, Trevor Lawrence threw a beautiful pass, looked like he would have been in the end zone. Jaguars would have taken an early lead. He just can't quite haul it in. Are you worried about Ridley? I'm not worried. I, I think Calvin Ridley's a good player. He hadn't played in a while, and he hasn't played in real games in a long time. I think Calvin Ridley's a really good player. I think he's beating himself up. Uh, I think Calvin Ridley's going to be a good player, and he's going to be fine. Now, having said that, he's got to play better. You can't drop the ball in the end zone. You can't have the false starts. You can't have the other drop. He had a really bad game. So remember, the game one, he had a really good game. I think Calvin Ridley's going to be fine. I'm not worried about that. But he's got to play better. That's got to be the one get it out of your system game. He's got to play better. I think he will. Uh, Jamal, I think these weapons are good. I think they've got good weapons. I think Trevor Lawrence, by the way, is a really good player. But if the pocket, if he never has a clean pocket, if he's always moving, if he's always moved off his spot, it's going to be tough to be as good a player. It's tough for quarterbacks to operate under pressure, any quarterback. All right, we've kind of worked our way through the bad. Coming up when Teal the Show returns, we'll start to try and look at the positives of what the Jaguars have moving forward. That's straight ahead when we come back. Welcome back into Teal the Show. The Jaguars are 1-2 and two on the season. Not exactly the start we had in mind, but look, the sky isn't falling. There's still plenty of time left in the year. And even though there's been a little bit of a slow start, Doug Peterson still has confidence that his group is going to get things back on the right track moving forward. I got a lot of confidence in this team and how we, we can respond and and bounce back. And, and uh, you know, but it takes, listen, it's 14 games left and, and we got a, a, a big one this week. You know, we, we've got to continue to, you know, right the ship, obviously, and um, you know, fix the things that we need to fix. Look, this is a very talented team. Frank, you said in the first half of the show, this group has all the talent. The pieces just haven't quite put together just right, but eventually they should get there. Here's the good news. The NFL is really six three-game seasons. It's a long season, and if you're going to play badly, play badly in this one. We've all watched the NFL enough. It lasts forever. It starts around Labor Day, and it's, they're still going on in Valentine's Day. It's a long year. There's going to be some ups. There's going to be some downs. Now, you've got to solve those things. That doesn't mean you just assume that organically everything gets solved, but I think it's, it's, it's three games. You're three games in. Fix some things that you got to fix. Fix the physicality part, as I've said throughout this show tonight. I think that's the biggest part. But I think they'll get some things fixed. I do think it's a good locker room. I do think it's a good culture. And I do think they're a really well-coached team. And I think Doug Peterson's a good coach. All that together, I think they'll be okay. Again, that doesn't mean there's not some changes necessary at some of those positions up front. they got to figure that out. But I think they'll figure it out. I like their football team. I really do. This is a group that we've seen what they do when their back's against the wall. Last year, they got blown out one time. It was against the Detroit Lions. That was late in the season. And all of a sudden, it seemed like the pieces started to come together. It was like that was the reality check that they needed. Some of the guys say that they hope that this loss will spur some of the same conversations that happened after that Detroit game to help the team get headed in the right direction. I know that there's going to be a lot of candid conversations between all of us, um, you know, outside of the building, um, you know, and I look forward to having those and just being real with one another and uh, demanding excellence. Um, you know, it starts with me. It starts with everybody, you know, on the offense. And, uh, you know, I know all three phases are going to do that, too. So um, we'll get it turned around. You know, when you have this much talent on a team, sometimes you need that reality check, that, that reason for everyone to say, okay, look, maybe we can't just out-talent everybody. Everyone has to play their role and play as a team. Well, I'll tell you this. Doug Peterson said we all have to reevaluate, and it starts with me, meaning him. 
He's got to look at himself and say, do I have the right coaches coaching the right guys? Do I have the right personnel in? Am I putting them in a position to be the best player they can be? I love that he said that. But it also means the players. You only have so much time to practice. There's only so many hours you're together. Then you're at home by, with your family. You're away from the facility. Are you doing everything you can do to make sure you don't drop passes, to make sure you don't miss tackles, to make sure you don't false start? Are you doing everything you can do to be the best player you can be? Now, again, I like this team. I said that earlier. So I'm guessing for the most part they are. But that's the question you have to ask. Uh, why are we dropping passes? Why did I drop a pass? Why did I miss a tackle? Why did I not know to tackle the fullback on the, on the kickoff for crying out loud? How did I miss that? Did I have a bad angle? Let me go back and watch tape and see if I took a bad angle. I think every player's got to go back and do that when teams struggle. I think Doug's the right guy to lead them toward that. I do. I, I agree with you there. Doug Peterson has definitely done a good job. He is the calm within the storm. Whether they win, lose, you get kind of the same guy no matter what. All right, Frank. Uh, next up for the Jaguars, their trip to London. Two weeks there. First game is going to be against the Atlanta Falcons. I kind of pulled some of the guys along the way. Uh, the offensive guys seem to think that maybe the change up from the norm could help the team. Get them out of their comfort zone, kind of rattle the cage a little bit. Defensive guys basically told me they thought it was just the next game on the schedule. Do you think the trip to London can kind of help to get them out of that comfort zone, or is this just the game they need to play that's next? Well, I think there's two things. Number one, the, latter, the last thing you said, I think, is what matters most. It's the next game. When you lose a game, you can't wait to play the next game. And I think this team can't wait to play the next game. So I think that's the big thing. But I, I think sometimes when things aren't going well, get away from it all, get together, kind of be together away from it where it's just you. Yeah, I think there's something to be said for that, and I think that'll help the cause. All right, we'll keep an eye on it. The Jaguars are one and two at this point of the season. You said the season's broken up into games of three. First uh, season of three didn't go the Jaguars' way. We'll see if the next season of three can go a little bit better. We'll talk about it here on Teal the Show. Frank, thanks for being here. Thank you at home for tuning in. Good night, everybody, and go Jags.